Weiß. Es ist feuchter. Well, not for long. The Reverend? He's very poorly. Confined to his room. I'm sorry to hear this. I must visit. Please. He would like that. I must say, I am surprised to see you back here. You believed me. You believed everything that happened here. Because it is something that will live with me for the rest of my life. Without doubt, what happened here is beyond the realms of sanity. Before this case, I did not believe in the paranormal. I could see through people, through their games. I debunked them all. Bawley Rectory the, changed my perspective completely. She's still here, you know, waiting. I can sense her presence. I can sense her too. But the rectory, it's scheduled for demolition. And I feel that with its destruction, her secret will disappear also. It wasn't just her. Something else happened. Something you don't know about. Someone I didn't tell you about. But I thought you told me everything. This was different. I'm not sure if he was real or not. He didn't seem associated with her. Wait, a male presence? Yes, but he seemed so real. I'm sorry, I cannot tell you the story. Wait, Mrs. Foister, you, you must tell me. Marianne. You don't realize what Borley Rectory has done to me. It almost killed me. It has weakened me. I don't have long myself. I must know the story. In between the madness, in between the light and darkness, I saw him. Who was he? It was ten years ago. At first it was just glimpses in the corner of my eye. Do you believe the energy of a place can transfer to another location, object, or even another time? What you're saying is too fantastic to comprehend, but yes, I believe that the energy from a location can affix itself to an object or indeed a person. He has always been here. He'd visit me a few times. I'd reach out, and there he was, right in front of me. And then gone in a whisper. It, it stopped nearly ten years ago. And he never returned. Why have you not told anyone this? Mr. Price, do you believe in love at first sight? Why in certain circumstances? But real life is not some whimsical love story. You wonder why I'm here, right now, why I have come back. Why, yes. Because I sensed he was back. I was hoping to see him one more time. Even if that last time was a goodbye.
You must be Lieutenant O'Neill. I am. Are you Mr. Gibson? I am Edward, Edward Gibson, the gamekeeper around here. You on the land? Heavens, no. For now, the land is effectively untended. It was requisitioned by the army in 1940. It's been used for training and such. I see. The cottage is further up the path here. If you like, we can go up together. Sure. It's really something, isn't it? Quite wonderful. After the Home Office requisitioned the land, we rather thought it would be used for refugees. You did? Yes. Well, we didn't exactly expect it to be used for... Well, I, I don't actually know what it is being used for. That's because it's classified. Classified? Oh, I see. Walls have ears and all that. Well, it's got warm running water as well as cold. It gets a trifle cold in the winter months. If you're here, then. I don't know. My son, he helped to renovate the cottage some time before the war. The plan was for him to move in with his wife. Well, I'm sure he'll get it back when all this is over. Sadly, he lost his life in Dunkirk. Sorry. It's fine. You wasn't to know. King and country and all that. It seems like I'm not the only one in the dark, then. Is there a key? I can have a girl deliver goods to your door every day, if you wish. Including the papers. Sure. Uh, my cottage is two miles further south on the road. If you get stuck, you can always pay me a visit and I can see what I can do you. Thank you. Your leg still gives you trouble. Yes, I expect it would. Oh, I took some shrapnel in the song. Some wounds have a habit of lingering, don't they? I'm curious why you didn't get posted back to the United States. Thank you. Really? Of course. Would you like me to walk you back down the path? No, thank you. Have a nice day.
It is. Over. Any idea of cipher or code? Or do you believe it's just chatter? Over. Could just be chatter. I'll spend some more time on it. See if they keep talking. Over. Okay, good work. Over. Over and out. Jesus. Sorry, I... Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. No, that's all right. Uh, Mr. Gibson said I should be expecting a visitor. <laughs> For me? Mm-hmm. There's quite a lot here. I don't need all this. They said they'd paid for it and... You too speak then. Here, I'll take these. I don't need the rest. Are you sure? Yeah, you're all on rations here. What would I look like living like this? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gibson asked if you'd like more tomorrow. Maybe every other day. Are you okay? Yes. Just very tired, sir. Oh, please don't. Uh, Robert. Called Robert. Oh. Laura. It's a firm handshake. It's the wall. I didn't realize you'd be American. Well, we've got to go somewhere, you know. I should go.
I'm sure, over. CO states that you must be absolutely certain, over. I am certain, over. Okay, still continue to find patterns, over. Over and out. Mr. Gibson. How are you finding it, old boy? It's fine. Perfect. Uh, I'm on my way into the village. Wondered if there was anything you wanted me to collect. Oh, I'm fine. Thank you, though. Of course. Is that all? Yes. Uh, Mr. Gibson. Yes. The girl, Laura. She seems spooked by coming here. Oh. I see. You do? Is it a bother? No, it's no bother. It's just... This area has something of a reputation, you see. A reputation? Yes. It, it's all a little embarrassing, and I would rather not indulge it. If it is a problem, I can discuss it with Laura. I wouldn't want Laura to get into trouble. I can assure you she won't be. Just a firm word. No, no, she's fine. Everything's fine. It's just, I'm just curious. Have you explored the area? I have. The ruins, right? Is that what it is? Or was it a church? A rectory, in fact, dear boy. A rectory? Yes. Is there a story there? Just perhaps stay away from there. What happened to it? Very well. It, it burned down. 
in 1939, before the war. Burnt down? Yes. Now, that is all I am happy to answer. And why is that? Because I don't like indulging fantasy. I must admit, I do find that Americans can be a little eccentric. Thanks. But if you really want to know what the fuss is all about, then I would suggest speaking with Laura. And ask her what? Why she finds the place so scary. Have a nice morning. I put the stuff away for you. I'm sorry I scared you. It's fine. No, it isn't. My dad, he was like that. Nightmares? He would try and stay awake for as long as possible. He reached the point where he was too terrified to sleep. Too terrified to sleep? At least I haven't got to that point yet. I'm sorry, I didn't mean no, to. please. It's fine. I'm sorry I woke you. I was just... I don't know. What's that radio equipment for? I can't tell you. Really? There's pads in there, written in German. What are you? Think I'm a spy? No. If you were, I don't know what you'd want to spy on around here. It's a listening post. We can pick up on German transmissions here. Like military? Maybe. Most of the time it's just chatter. Other times it's music or comedy. Comedy? Really? Hmm. Germans have comedy too. <laughs> K-1. 
Can I ask about your leg? <laughs> Anzio. Got an Anzio. My fiance is in Burma. I haven't heard from him in two months now. Anyway, I should go. Wait. Why don't you like this cottage? You'll think me silly. No, no. The look in your face, that's fear. What have you got to be so scared about a place like this? Nothing. What is it? It's really nothing. It's the rectory, right? The nun? Jesus Christ, you're shaking like a leaf. What is it? Laura, please. Please, sir. Don't go digging around in the past. No good will come of it. There you are. You look as if you've hardly slept a wink. I haven't. You saw something, didn't you? Have you? Laura, please. Yes. Well, what did you see? I must leave these here and go. It's the cottage, right? You're terrified of this place. The fear in your eyes is... Well, I haven't seen fear like that since I was over there. I have to go. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. 
but I, with shrouds of graceful praise, will sacrifice unto you. What I have vowed I will make good. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. You've heard those words as well, right? That prayer? You've heard them as well. Okay. Okay, and you've seen her too, right? The nun? Yes. Then tell me about it. All of it, please. Thank you. It was before the war. Mr. Gibson's son, he was looking after the house. Wanted to build it. Anyway. Look, maybe I should go. Please. He was away for a while, tending to the land for something. And? I heard her. The whispering, the praying. And then I could see her. She was standing in the doorway, her back to me. Praying. As quick as I saw it, she was gone. Gone? I was white as a sheet. I pleaded with Mr. Gibson. I thought that it was like an omen, a bad omen. What do you mean? My grandmother, she was, she was superstitious. She believed in whatever this is, and she always said that whenever anything like this appeared, it was like... Like something bad was going to happen? Yeah. And did it? We went to war, didn't we? Laura, I'm not going to lie, I did see something. But we went to war for a lot of different reasons. Are you telling me that she's the reason why Germany invaded Poland? Or, or why there was Pearl Harbor? No, it's just... It's like it's drawn to misery. Look, you wanted to know what I saw and I told you. I'm sorry. For what? I don't know. Making you feel uncomfortable. Look. This cottage. The area. All of it. It has history. History? Yes. That wasn't the first time I saw it. There was another? Borley Rectory. It was a house, a grand house. The villagers served those that lived there, my mum included. There was a fire, a huge fire. And it burnt down. I was there with the Granvilles. Inside, the fire started and we all got out. My mum made sure I was out and safe in the grounds. My mum left me with the nanny while she went to help the others put the fire out. Everyone was so focused on the fire, they... She was in the window. The nun? Watching. Calm. Like... Serene. Just watching it all burn. Then she saw me. What did she do? She did this. What? It was like a warning. To not say anything. And now I have. Now something will happen to me. Laura. No, I should go. I should go. I shouldn't have. But... I gathered as much stuff as I could. 
About the area, the things that happened, books and stuff. And you kept them? I'd very much like to read those books. So, this is how they do things in the United States, is it? No, no, of course not, sir. I'll be outside. You have ten minutes to have yourself ready. Sir. Ah, now you're befitting an officer of the uniform. I wasn't expecting a visitor, sir. Should I have waited for an invitation? No, of course not, sir. When your superiors transferred you to the Allied Communications Unit, they assured me that you were the best man for the job. Based on what you've achieved so far, I'm inclined to agree. However, I'm also mindful of the fact that they made no qualms about you being transferred. Things like that give me pause. As indeed does a faint smell of alcohol. No, 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 don't worry. We're at war. The chap may do anything to steady his nerves. The question is, do you take it too far? It's just to steady the nerves, sir. Right. That's my guarantee. Guarantee? We're at war, boy. In war, there are no guarantees. There are several listening posts like yours. Their positions up and down the countryside of Britain allow the best possible chance of intercepting German transmissions. Your work here is important, vital. I see. It was your expertise in languages that made you the best man for the job. Thank you, sir. What was your background before the war? Science. Science and languages. Right. Well, you've another five months out here, that's all. 
It would help to know what I was listening for in particular, sir. Listening for? Well, you listen, send us the codes, we interpret them. And that is a strictly need-to-know basis only, old chap. Right. Planning something big, aren't we? <laughs> well, I'd best be off, old chap. Keep up the good work and uh, remember to report anything and everything. Understood? Sir. Razor 6 able to find six. Over. We just got buzz by some bombers headed west on 48, 48, 17, 9, 32, 9, position 3, 2, 3, 4, 8, 1. We're all just over.
the hell are you doing here? You need to leave. Excuse me? Leave? Listen, old chap. If you really are working for the military, you need to take a moment. There's a war on. You smell like a brewery. Just go. I think your superiors need to know what's happening here. Wait. What? You want to help me? I don't think I do. Find me this man. Mr. Price, you don't know me, and I understand that this letter may come out of nowhere, but I feel like I must write to you with the utmost urgency. I fear I may have uncovered something truly awful in this area. This site that you once investigated, I implore you for help. I need your help. Mr. Price. Your morning mail, sir. Thank you, dear boy. Lieutenant O'Neill. Good God. Harry Price. Your correspondence. It intrigued me. Uh, would you like a drink? Uh, tea would be splendid, thank you. Should I even be here? I work for Allied Communications, listening in on German transmissions. I see. It sounds like complicated work. It is, and not without its difficulties. <clears throat> Lieutenant. Robert, please. Thank you. So, shall we talk about what's been happening to you? Of course. Sorry, I'm American. Uh, tea isn't exactly our forte. Uh, starting at the beginning is difficult. What brought you here? Mr. Price, I'm still governed by the Official Secrets Act. I'm <laughs> not asking for details, dear boy. I merely wish to know how you ended up here. I was transferred via recommendation. I'm an expert in languages, specifically German. You are? I spent some time in Germany before the war. Before Hitler. I see. It's not enough to understand a language. To know another language, you need to know the culture, how they interact, how they love, how they... You don't see them as the enemy? No. No, Hitler? Yeah. He's a monster. And most of German high command are monsters too, but the soldiers? They're just young men like us. Us? <laughs> Me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just nervous. <laughs> I read your book, by the way. Oh, yeah, glad to hear it. I'd like to know more about Marianne. What would you like to know? Well, who was she? Was? Is. She's still alive, dear boy. Is she? Why, of course. I see. And after that, that was when I decided to write to you. I see. So what's your opinion? My opinion? Uh, I need to gather my thoughts. No, no, please, Mr. Price. Instinctively, what are your thoughts? That this is the work of a fantasist? You're joking, right? No, I'm afraid not. A fantasist? Robert, I say this not to antagonize you, but to... There are two schools of thought. One, that these events are indeed real. Or, that they are the work of the deluded or liars. So I'm a liar? I don't believe you are. Okay. 
I believe in life after death, but unlike my peers, I cannot merely rush to a conclusion, to have blind faith in a subject. You require no proof merely to believe. I need more than that. I know, I read your works. You, in the cases you investigated, several of them you yourself proved to be hoaxes. But Borley was different, wasn't it? Borley was different. You believed it was real. There were certain events that took place that, yes, I couldn't disprove. Then what about me? Your case is slightly different. Slightly? Well, Robert, I cannot merely believe you. I must examine the facts. All right, and what are those? You are an alcoholic, are you not? I... And I believe you are still suffering from a form of shell shock. I'm... And you forget I've seen that face before. The faces of the young men returning from France in the Great War. Mr. Price. It's all over your face, Robert. It's... it's etched, like trenches. Go on. This area, the books, the photograph, the transmissions, all of these things, they impair your ability to reach a logical conclusion. Mr. Price, I won't deny any of that, but I did see something. Time is short. I believe that it's urgent medical help you require and to return to the United States. You're leaving? I'm afraid I must. As I say, I cannot help you. Mr. Price, in your book, you yourself said that you must first investigate all possibilities before coming to a conclusion. And? You've listened to my story, and you've seen the evidence of my state of mind, but you still haven't seen anything for yourself. Right. Then stay here. One night, that's all I ask. And if nothing happens? Then I will request immediate transfer and demobbing to the US. Is that your word? Absolutely. Very well. Thank you. But if I'm right... Yes. Robert, in order for me to help you, I need to know something. Yes. What exactly happened over there? Same thing that happens to everyone else. I believe your story is different. What? A German soldier, the woods in Italy. You said you were separated from your platoon. I ran. You ran? We were supposed to be storming this German post. They cut us to ribbons. Machine gun fire, Molotovs. It was like we were rats in a barrel. I stood in the middle of this gunfire and I ran. I see. My entire platoon was cut down. I escaped, only to have a German soldier stumble across me. But that wasn't the worst of it. My platoon commander, he thought I just got separated and rewarded me with gallantry. but I ran like a coward. No coward, Robert. You merely did not wish to die. I'd been in combat situations for two years before that. Not a problem. But in that moment, I... The body has a point of no return, Robert. A point where it can take no more. And that point is different for each person. And you think that was it for me? I'd reached my point? I believe so. Well, what about you then? Where's your point? I hope I never reach that point. Okay.
bullets. Robert? Robert? Price, what is it? My heart. Did you see something? Mm. You saw something in the garden, didn't you? Was it the nun? You can see me? Yes. Am I dreaming? Am I dreaming? There's only one way to find out. Usually when your hand touches mine, you disappear. I usually wake up. <laughs> Mr. Price? Look, do you really think you should be... You're right, of course, dear boy. You know, it's not often that one in this field experiences something that chills you to the bone. Today, I fear that is the case. So it was her, then? 
There's a theory that it's not the houses that are haunted, but the people. The people? Have you never wondered why some families, they can experience such terror, yet others see nothing? I've never really thought about it. The people, it, from the other side or wherever, it's as if they survive on the heartbreak of the living. It's upon you, like a shroud, dear boy. The heartbreak, the horrors of the war. So what am I, a divining rod? I don't quite know, Robert. We're on the very edge of science. There is no actionable evidence, merely what we perceive. But Mr. Price, if you're not gonna take this. Robert, I feel your case requires further investigation. You need to worry, Lieutenant. I am not a spy. Who said I was worried? It is the Deutschland you are at war with, not Austria. I know. The last I checked, Hitler was from Austria. Of course, I have been feted by das Englander government. But not by mine. Robert, Rudy is here to help. I don't doubt that. But the sort of trouble I would be in having civilians in here. Least of all, the German. Austria. Or whichever. Robert, you do want to be helped, don't you? All I know is the kind of punishment treason carries. And what is the price for your own sanity? Excuse me? You have not been sleeping. The eyes, they never lie. I have been sleeping. Nay. You've been walking the grounds at the Bolly Rectory. For how long? Hmm? Any ideas? Look. If you want to turn me away, that is fine. But I think I may be your best chance. Robert, Rudy is one of my most trusted colleagues. I will vouch for him personally. Ich bin kein Spion. Robert, I am not a spy. Okay. Okay, what next? Next? Next we shall start at the beginning.
That is quite a story. It's not a story. Oh, but it is. At least to others, they will think it's a story. Will they not? I don't know what it is. Rudy, what are your thoughts? Robert is experiencing something I have no word for. What do you mean? It isn't just seeing the nun, is it? It's Maria in your dreams and in the flesh. A general consensus is that the dead haunt the living, not the living haunting the living. Can you help me? I am not sure. What? You've seen her too? The nun, yes. What is the basis for this nun? Ah, now you see, the unpublished story goes that the nun, she becomes pregnant. Now, naturally, due to her faith, her crimes exact the most severe of punishments. Is that who it is? This nun? I believe that most entities of the afterlife often lack Awareness of what they are. They are, what is the word? More emotive. What do you mean? A man dies, for example, of old age. He passes peacefully. There is no pain. His emotion is less emotive. Therefore, he is less likely to interfere with the other side, with our world. Think of the most powerful emotions. Love. Hate. Fear. A pregnant woman murdered by the one she trusted in the name of the God she loved. Think of the pure hatred that must have filled her heart at that precise moment. Oh my God. Yeah. Indeed. Looks like I'm in your hands, Rudy. It is my plan to induce a trance into Robert, pushing him into a dreamlike state. With each tick, you will feel your body slowly drifting into sleep. We shall begin. Reach out to her. Reach out. Quickly. Before she 
she leaves. Robert, you must control your feelings. Let go. Yeah. Seek the answers. Nine. She's getting away. What is this? That is not her. She is not the one you seek. Where you wanted to show me an innocent woman murdered. Oh, she doesn't know peace yet, is that it? It's not just her, is it? She has a child, and a child, an unborn child. But maybe I can help I know what I have to do It's you. It's you. You're Marianne. I'm not sure why I'm here today. Something flashed through my mind. A vision. For her. I came for her. The nun? Yes. She needs to be at peace. Exactly. She wasn't vengeful. She wanted help. I'm here to finish her story. I have felt her presence for so many years. Her cries for help echoing through these now silent corridors. You've been in my dreams too. We're connected. All of us. We both need to help her.
she's here. Whoever you were, this cross is for you. Why us? Maybe all three of us were lost in some way. You, me, the nun. <laughs> 